A massive issue that I faced getting started with FPV was remote controllers. I went through multiple controllers, multiple brands, weeks of researching and watching reviews, all to end up settling with the one controller that I wish I had brought from the start. The RadioMaster TX16S with Hall Sensor Gimbals. This controller is pretty much perfect with only three things that I believe holds it back, but we'll get to those soon. First up, I am very aware of the pricing barrier. I started off with the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 ready to fly kit. It came with the controller, goggles, drone and batteries, all for I think about $430. And when comparing that to how much the TX16 costs, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's not much difference. But it was at this exact point in time that I made the mistake of deciding that I didn't just want to spend that amount of money on just a controller. And I say mistake because at the end of it all, I ended up spending quite a bit more than I could have. My first controller sucked and I kind of expected it to because I bought a fairly budget ready to fly kit. That controller was called the Emacs E6 and to buy it on its own it would be around $50. So again I wasn't too surprised, although I definitely was a bit bummed out that the gimbal broke after just 5 hours of use. I hadn't even taken the quad out for its first flight at this point as I was making sure to nail the initial learning curve of FPV so I literally needed a new controller to keep going. This is when I went on my hunt for the best budget friendly controller for FPV. After a lot of research I ended up finding the Beta FPV Light Radio 2. Now this one had a lot of positive things going for it with reviews saying it's literally one of the best budget controllers on the market. So I purchased it, spent around $100 and got excited to receive it so I could keep practicing on the simulator. Upon opening the controller up, it immediately had a really premium feel to it. The gimbals actually felt solid and of much higher quality than the Emacs ones and even the packaging was fairly nice too. So I genuinely thought I'd hit the jackpot and that this was going to be the one that I'd use for a while. But I was, uh, I was wrong. <laughs> Super wrong. It literally took less than one hour in the simulator for the left hand gimbal to start twitching around. So this inspired me to send an email to KiwiQuads who I had brought the controller through and they came back with an email saying that they were aware of this issue and would send me a replacement gimbal to plug in. Long story short, I got the gimbal, replaced it and then started to use it again. Not more than two hours later, the left hand gimbal started to twitch. Now, I want to be real clear here. I was not being rough with the controller and I really did want it to work. At this point though, these controller issues had put a real damper on my whole FPV experience and I was beginning to give up on it a little bit if I'm being honest. This was one of those moments where I really felt on the fence. I could let FPV go and say it wasn't for me. Or I could get another controller and give it one last try. I decided that there was no reward without a little bit of risk so I researched around and found a seemingly bulletproof controller the RadioMaster TX16S. It was well out of my price range and I seriously did not want to spend the money, but I came to the resolution that if I bought this expensive controller and ended up not enjoying FPV, I could at least sell it and get most of my money back. So as you probably guessed, I pulled the trigger, bought the TX16S for $420, nearly the same price as the whole Emacs Tiny Hawk kit, but I got it ordered. To make things easy for you to understand here too, I still have this controller, it's, it's sitting right here, it's my main controller, it's been over 18 months and I haven't had the need to buy another controller at all. I've used it for long range cinematics, high intensity professional jobs and even some light freestyle. So like I said before, this is pretty much the perfect controller. Pretty much is exactly that however. So let's cover what's holding it back. Firstly, this was one of the most painful and complicated things I have ever had to do in my life. Okay, like maybe not quite, but to set up and link this controller to the drone, wow, it's painful man. Like it took me hours upon hours to even find a tutorial that was actually good and easy to understand. And even now to this day, I couldn't confidently tell you how to set this thing up. You can't just press a link button to have the controller set up. Instead, you need to tell the controller what each of the stick movements do. You can't just flick the switch and then map it to beta flight because first you need to go to the switch on the controller and tell the controller what happens when you flick the switch. I've linked the tutorial down below that I used. Hopefully it can be of help to you, but yeah, just know that this was one son of a to set up. Secondly, I'm feeling like I'm missing out a little bit with the fact that it doesn't work with DJI FPV drones like the Avada or DJI FPV. Obviously, this isn't Radio Master's fault as DJI have their own proprietary systems and don't allow for third-party connections. But if flying DJI FPV drones is of interest to you, you're gonna have to own their controller, which you're gonna have to fork out another $200 for. Finally, the only thing that I honestly don't like about the controller that actively affects me on a day-to-day -day basis is its size. On one hand, it's really nice to have a large controller that feels weighty and solid, as this helps me to fly confidently. 
On the other hand, however, the second I want to travel anywhere with my FPV drone, I have to try and fit this foam case in somewhere, or even if I'm roughing it, this massive controller. It also makes it significantly hard for me to hold without a lanyard, so I generally find myself sitting down and resting the controller on my leg. So I get it, you're strung up between spending a decent amount of cash on a controller or just trying your luck with a cheaper alternative. Take my past experiences as proof and just know that if you do take the cheaper route, you're most likely putting yourself up for months of frustration and you could highly hurt your FPV experience as a whole. So I do hope that you make the right decision and also decide to subscribe.